Hello and welcome back to Build a CubeSat. I'm Manuel and today we are talking about connecting the PCB stack in my CubeSat. If you have spent any amount of time looking at CubeSat hardware, you have probably come across the PC104 standard. It's a standard size for industrial computers that has been around since 1992. Its PCB size is 90 by 96 millimeters, which has kind of made it a natural fit for CubeSats. So without being mandated by the CubeSat design specs, it's become a kind of a de facto standard. In its current iteration, it features a connector with 120 positions that are two millimeters apart in four rows. So that's 30 pins per row, which means the connector is roughly 60 by eight by nine millimeters in size. Usually it's a stacking connector, so its pins are long enough to plug into the next connector on the PCB below. Now what we see here is the approximate size of the PCB that's gonna fit in my CubeSat. It is not final yet, but it's a fair enough approximation. Now my problem is that this connector is kind of large relative to the available board space. So while looking at other board-to-board -board connectors, I remembered that everybody's favorite electronics company SparkFun actually uses M.2 connectors in their Micromod ecosystem. If you are not familiar with Micromod, it's a collection of microcontrollers and carrier boards that you can mix and match for super quick and easy prototyping. So exactly my thing. And being the awesome people that they are, they have published a detailed write-up of what to consider when prototyping with Micromod, and they have also made all the design files open source. Basically what they did is using an e-keyed M.2 connector with a different pinout that suits their application better. As you may know, the M.2 standard has various keys, meaning the location of the little tab or tabs that divides the connector asymmetrically, so you can only insert the right kind of board in the right orientation. These keys are referenced with a letter, so it's either A, B, E or M. According to this publication by DLOC, the key E is usually intended for two lanes of PCIe and USB. But of course, that's not a physical property of the connector, but just a matter of the pin mount. So you can absolutely use the pins for something else, as long as you don't exceed the voltage and current ratings. Phil Salmony, for example, over at Phil's lab has not too long ago made something similar, and I will link to this video here and in the description. So I plan to basically do the same thing and turn the Micromod idea into what I call Macromod for now and use it to connect a whole stack of boards. I am pretty sure I will run into some problems because for one, I need a connector on either side of the PCB, which will make routing for signal integrity tricky. I don't plan to use anything crazy on these connectors, but of course I2C is going to be necessary and ideally other protocols like SPI can or maybe even USB 2.0 would be possible as well. I'm most familiar with I2C, but I'm still not sure if it's the right protocol to use in this application, especially in terms of signal integrity, uh, EMI, and ease of implementation. So if you have any experience or thoughts, please leave a comment. I'm currently learning about this kind of stuff, so this is very much a work in progress, but I think I'll start off by populating only the pins that I know that I will need. So 3.3 volts, 5 volts, ground, as well as clock and data for the I2C and system level status pins like RBF removed or deployment switch released, and then build up from there. Although I'm pretty sure that we'll use up a bunch of those pins for power alone, because in an M.2 connector each pin is only rated for 0.5 amps, while it's more like 5 or 6 amps in a PC104 connector. So continuing on from here, you would have another PCB that's at least 15 mm away and connect the two together with a simple two-layer 0.8 mm PCB that could be made in various lengths to support various configurations. Anyways, because I'm a big fan of symmetry and redundancy, I plan on making these symmetrical. With 67 positions per connector, this will give us 134 positions in total, so even more than the PC104 connector. Of course, it would make a lot of sense to also use the volume in between the two PCBs. My board clamps have a slot every 5mm, so what I envision doing is to have daughter boards that connect to the main board with more conventional pin headers. So if you really want your cube set to have a high density, you can have a PCB every 5mm. So that's how I plan to connect the PCBs in my cube set. And I'm pretty sure the first step for this is to just go ahead and try and make a prototype and see if I get any kind of connection to work on this or even if the routing is even possible. 
but that's going to be after I have a minimum viable product for the electrical power system on my CubeSat, which is what I am currently working on. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked this video and I'll see you in the next one.